Hi, everybody. Hi. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello, and welcome to show number 74 of Beetle News Briefs. Your home for all the news you need to know and all the best talk from the Beatles world. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci, and this is something of a unusual show. We're calling it an extra because if you subscribe to us, you know we just posted show 73 with myself and contributing editor Candy Leonard talking about the Abbey Road album. Well, shortly thereafter, my longtime friend in Liverpool, Gene Catherell, let us know that the funding campaign for the Brian Epstein statue in Liverpool was nearing an end without getting close to its goal of £60,000 that it needed to raise by October 24th. The funding page, by the way, for it is at www.crowdfunder.co.uk slash the-brian-epstein-statue-project. Anyway, we offered to write and also do a podcast to help the campaign, and this is the podcast part. Jean Catherell is someone who I'm sure many of you know. She's a first-generation Beatles fan who saw them before they became famous on their way up the ladder. She uh, worked in LIPA in, in uh, the Liverpool Institute of Performing Arts, which she talks about in the interview. Uh, and in the interview, she talks about the statue campaign and why it's needed and how much the Beatles have been a part of her life. Here's my interview with Jean. I'm talking today with uh, Jean Catherell in Liverpool, uh, and we're going to talk about the Brian Epstein uh, statue project. Hello, Jean. Nice to talk to you again. Hi, Steve. Nice to talk to you, too. You're Now, how are you involved with the statue? Uh, there is a formed committee, a group of people who are um, the instigators of, of this particular project. And for myself personally, it's just um, I like to be involved in all Beatles stuff and uh, I like to feel that maybe I can add some help to everything and I'm not the only one there are many of us here who you know I'm not exactly assigned to this committee but anybody who can help just jumps in and they know I'm I'm doing this and um, I just wanted to be able to try and help because we're running out of days now and you know the sooner that we can get this out to the world the wider world the better it was first shown at beetle week um it was on display uh, then so lots of people have seen it already um but maybe they've gone away and forgotten about it so that's why we're having this like big push uh, all over the media everybody's sharing it but as i said we are running out of days now so we need to really move on this the statue is not done correct no, uh, the crowdfunding um, project which has been set up is uh, an all or nothing. So if people donate to the crowdfunding project, the money will be taken. But be assured that if if the project doesn't reach the £60,000 that it requires, all monies will be returned. Okay. And the, the statue needs the money to be done, correct? It's not going to be done without the money, right? No, it, if we don't make the money, then the statue, the whole idea will be set aside and maybe picked up at another time. But the, the money needed for the statue, which is £60,000, that that includes everything that um, that leads up to the, the production of the statue. So there's no on costs. It's £60,000 and that's it. That includes everything, you know, all the, the admin and anything that that has to be dealt with before the statue goes into production. So there's no on costs. It's sixty thousand pounds, and that's it. Can I ask why it's it's going public, and maybe the the, the um, Liverpool City Council or you know the government in Liverpool hasn't done anything with this? Is there is there a particular reason why it, it's all having to be done by the public? Yeah, the the reason is that um, the the people who are the uh, the instigators of the project, they don't want the statue to belong to anybody. They want it to be there for the world to see, uh, knowing it was put there by all the kind people who have donated towards its production. So the angle is basically they don't want somebody to own it. They they think it should be free. Has there been any contact with Apple at all on this? Is Apple doing anything or, or have they at least said, 
you know, we're, we're okay with this? They've been approached. All the people that you would imagine to be approached have been approached. Uh, nobody has objected to this. Um, Brian's family are on board, uh, as well as a lot of other people. And I know that they have made a donation privately, Brian's uh, family, that is. Um, as I say, everybody has been connected, but nobody has said, no, you can't do that or no, we don't we don't want you to do that. So everybody is on board. OK, at this particular date, this is uh, October 12th. How much money do you have now? I, the, the, the thing I printed out just now said seven thousand six hundred and sixty four pounds, which is 13 percent. Is that is that's that correct? It, that's it. That's what I'm looking at also today. And it's a, there's 189 supporters and we appreciate every single one of those people because we've only got 11 days left now. And we've been going for, you know, a number of weeks. All donations are gratefully welcome, uh, but they're all fairly small donations. So that's the reason why we are still only at just over seven and a half thousand pounds with 11 days to go. What happens if if the 11 days pass and you don't get enough money? The project will stop. Everybody will get their money back. Um, and it may be to try again, you know, in, in a different way. Um, maybe uh, look for some independent funding because we have like a heritage fund here um, and you can make an application for that. I, I don't know at this point whether the committee uh, has done that and I'm sure that if they had we would know about it so I think it's been primarily that they want it to be uh, by the fans for the fans hence the reason they don't want anybody to own it okay there are some or at least according to the 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 sheet I just printed out there are some bonuses for people who contribute do you want to talk about some of those Yes, there, there are a lot of um, rewards, as they are called, and they go they go literally from a very small amount of money up to twenty three thousand pounds. And I know twenty three thousand pounds isn't in everybody's remit uh, financially, but you know it's an absolutely super reward. It's um, it's a maquette, and it's the four Beatles and Brian. You know, then that's that's twenty three thousand pounds, and it's called the Vision. Um, and it really is a super award. It would look great in somebody's office or even home, you know, um, or a bar, anything to do with the Beatles, anything like that. They, they go from, as I say, from a small amount uh, with five pounds, which enters you into the Hall of Fame. So you will be on on the list to say that you contributed. You can get a certificate for £10. For £15, you can add your own clay. And I think that's a really great thing to do. You know, you can, if you're local, for example, you can buy a piece of clay for £15 and come and actually put the clay onto the statue yourself. So therefore, you're leaving a little bit of your own legacy in Liverpool, you know. And I've told many people, and I've put it out on Facebook, for anybody that isn't local or not in this country, and they want to do that, I would be happy to go along and place their clay and video it so that they've got something to show for for that. And there's signed books there's a guided tour, there's dinner with the, the sculptor and a tour of the foundry. There's an original bronze bust of Brian, uh, which is £9,000. Um, and again, that's something that would look great in a bar or, you know, um, a hotel in the lobby, you know, things like that. So there are lots of choices to suit everybody's pockets, really. And they're all they're all great rewards. Mm-hmm. The two actually that caught my eye are the £23 which is the signed copy of Kevin Roach's book, 1964, The Year That Changed the World. Yeah. And, which is interesting. And then the 150-pound, the Epstein Liverpool guided tour, can you give some details about that? I wouldn't be involved in the tour itself. I must make that clear. That will be for somebody else to do. But it's it, it comes with – it's for two people, and it's a guided experience to include everything to do with Brian in the city. Um, where he lived, uh, where he worked, um, probably where his grandparents lived when they first came into the city, because all these places still stand. And also you would get a a Hall of Fame certificate as well as part of of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, I think that's a super, a super reward. 
For anybody in the U.S. that's listening, the conversion rate, we, I know we've been talking about British pounds, the conversion rate for British pounds right now is 0.79 cents a pound. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So that's actually that's it's actually that works in our favor. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Yeah. I was. I it actually the last I remember doing it, it was it was a buck thirty five, but it's only yeah. seventy nine cents now, according to XE dot com, wow. which has been the site that I've used many times in the past to do yeah. convert. So, so, so therefore, based on that, please, everybody who's listening, please buy something and do it now. And they, and they can do it by going to crowdfunder. It's it's a crowdfunder, not a Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Um, so it's crowdfunder.co.uk, and then just search for Brian Epstein Statue Project, and it will okay. take you right to the page. And all the details are there on how to donate and how much to donate choose your, your reward and um there are if on the page it will tell you for example when you choose your reward it'll give you an estimated delivery for that reward let's say that again let's do that again because there is a a brian epstein plaque page i found on kickstarter.com and i thought they were connected with you no the the actual address is uh www.crowdfunder.co.uk backslash the Brian Epstein statue project. Okay. Yeah. And, and I, there's I, a hyphen in between each of those words, the Brian okay. Epstein statue project. Okay. Yeah. I, I found that. And it, it will accept American donations, correct? Oh yes. Yes. We've had a number of Americans who've already donated from, from the States. So we know that it, it works. Okay. Okay. All right. Is there anything else, anything else that we haven't, that I haven't, um, explored with you on this gene that that uh, needs to be said oh only that um you know brian's place in in the city uh, is is obviously secured because of of uh, the fact that he was from the city and uh, the work that he's done not just with the beatles but in the early days he had many other bands signed to him and right. he's he's although there are you know there's a plaque on the uh, the building where he was born, which is in the city centre. But, you know, the feeling is that, we you know, we've got a lot of statues in Liverpool for all sorts of people. Um, and we've got this amazing statue down at the pier head of the Four Beatles, which was donated to the city by the Cavern Club. Um, and that was opened last year. That was unveiled last year. And mm -hmm. we all we're missing really is, you know, Brian deserves to be acknowledged in a huge way. Um, and we feel that this is the way we should do it. There should be a statue of Brian somewhere in the city. And there are um, a number of places that have been um, offered where the statue should be. And that will be decided by the public. And uh, there will be some kind of communication go out eventually if we if we do reach our target um, to choose where the statue should go in the city. Um, but, you know, Brian deserves this, and you know we we need to make it happen. We really do need to make it happen. Okay, for people who and I'm I think a lot of people who who are listening to this know who you are, but just if you wouldn't mind, I'm gonna I'm just gonna kind of ask you to talk about your history with the Beatles. I no, thought I was just a year too young to actually get into the cavern to see the Beatles. Um, but I, I did see them in, in lots of other places. I just never was able to get into the cavern. I was just, you know, just a little bit too young. And oh, you, wow. you had to um, you had to sort of know the doorman at the cavern. Uh, and uh, if he didn't know you, then you didn't stand a chance. And I tried, but it, it, it never worked for me. But I did see them in other places. And I've been a fan since 1962. <laughs> you did see Paul at the cavern. Oh gosh, I've seen Paul at the Cavern twice. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you yeah, you, were, you were there and last year, definitely. Yeah, you were, yeah, I remember you were there for 99 because we talked about that uh you and I communicated yeah. after that and I believe you're on the DVD. Right? I am. <laughs> I am. Yeah, it's a strange thing really because uh if you listen to the DVD, you can hear somebody shouting, "Please do some other guy." And he looks right down at me and says, we don't do, we don't do requests. <laughs> but um, obviously, you know, you might 
be aware or you might not be aware that I've been around the Beatles all of my life. They are the backdrop to my life. And um, I've met them all uh, at various parts in my life. And I worked at Lipper for six years. So I worked closely with Paul when Paul was was uh, visiting us. So, you know, I, I have got um, a, a pedigree, really, in, in that world, you know, and, and I just love everything about about the Beatles. And um, at the end of the day, I, I, I sum it up, really, in the fact that I'm a music fan. Uh, I love all music. I've got a huge collection of various types of music. But the Beatles will always be number one for me, always. Let me ask just one more question about about the fact that you – had seen them so, uh, you know, since 1962. I mean, that you were been a fan since 1962. For those of us who weren't around then, what was what were they like in in those early in those days before they came to America? What was? Uh, well, do you know that they would. Were... They were just absolutely amazing because they you you probably know this, Steve, you know, you know, your own Beatle history. But they they really honed their craft in Hamburg when when they were going out to Hamburg, when Alan Williams was taking them out there. Lots of the bands who were already there and had a good career and a good standing there pleaded with Alan not to send the Beatles because they would ruin it for everybody because they were they were not they were no good. They were really no good. Uh, they were just one of many, many bands, but they went to Hamburg and they came back so tight and together that, you know, they played a gig at Little and Town Hall and um, they were billed as direct from Hamburg and people thought they were German. It didn't say anything about who they were. It just said direct from Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And I know people who were at that gig at Little and Town Hall and they said that when the when the band came on, when they were introduced and they came on and they started playing, it was like a big whoa moment because the sound just pushed everybody to the back of the room, you know. Um, and that's when it really started for them because they they learned everything they needed to know while they were in Germany. And when they came here, they were just absolutely phenomenal to watch. I can remember I was at, you know, some gigs and I, I was at the um, the premiere of a, of a Hard Day's Night and they were just amazing. And, you know, it, for me, it was always all about the music. And when when I listen to the Beatles now, if I'm listening to the early stuff, like I call it the black and white music and it's part of it's my favorite section of of the Beatles. And I can be I, it, it takes me right back to where I was when I heard when I first heard it. You know, it's very, very emotive. And the music has stood the test of time. You know, here we are 60 plus years on still talking about them. You know, right. Right. Yeah. Did you meet? Did you? have contact also with Brian Epstein? Well, I did meet Brian a number of times because I used to buy my records at NEMS. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah. So I w- I've been served by Brian, you know, and, and see him in the shop, you know, just overseeing everything and leafing through through the records and putting things in order, you know. Um, so, yes, I have, I have met him. What was he like? He he was a a sort of a a quiet gentleman, and I mean a gentleman, he was. Um, And he was just quiet, and he was always interested to to listen to what you were looking for. And he had this this thing about if somebody came in and asked for something he'd never heard of, he would find it, regardless of where it was in the world, he would find it for you. So he was very customer service and, you know, customer facing all the time. Wow. I could, you know, Gene, I could, I could sit here and talk to you for hours and I wish, and, and uh, maybe someday we'll have to do this again. Um, Yes, definitely. But uh, thank you very much for taking the time for, for this. And, and I, to everyone, please, if you can, if you can do it, please put your money in on this. Um, This is one of those things like uh, another project that, you know, this kind of reminds me of was, Good old Frida, which yes. is, has been a, a tremendous, yes. was yeah. a tremendous boost to the Beatles. Um, and I mean, and this I, I I don't know if you know this, but I I've known Frida since I was fifteen, and oh, she is just the most wonderful person. Yes. She, 
She's yeah. she's one of a kind. She's very she special. She's very, very special. And um, anybody that meets her falls in love with her instantly. You know, she's just just a special, special person. Mm-hmm. Um, and for her to have lived through that, you know, to have the best job in the world, you know, um, and yet she still looks upon it as it was a job. <laughs> you know. And, and that movie was just was just tremendous. Oh. It is a great film. And if you have yeah. not seen it, you really need to see it. It's streaming all over the place and yeah. it's on DVD and Blu-ray and it's it's well worth uh, picking up. Um, but anyway, Jean, I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you go, and thank you for this. And and I'm going to cross my fingers and and say, if you can if you can afford to to donate even a small donation, please do. Yeah. So, I mean, okay. In, in closing, and before I let you go, I just want to mm-hmm. say to to yourself and anybody who's listening right now, is that this is really really important. If you love the Beatles and you love their music, then you owe you owe it to Brian to have his own standing in in the city of his birth. And you will leave your legacy here in Liverpool. And if you come and visit us, we will welcome you with open arms and we will do everything that you we need to do to make your visit here a, a good one and one that you will go home and never forget. And I thank every single person who has anything to do with this from here on in. And to you, Steve, for taking this, you know, away and doing something with it in the States is, is amazing for me. And I couldn't thank you enough. Thank you. Oh, I'm more than happy to do this. Thank you again, Jean. And okay. best, best of luck to you and everybody involved in this. And you too. Thank you so much. There you have it. Once again, the funding page is at www.crowdfunder.co.uk slash the dash brian dash epstein dash statue dash project and the deadline for the funding there is october 24th if you can help out this project please please do one small bit of news to keep up with our news gathering uh ringo posted his version of grow old with me from his forthcoming album what's my name on youtube on friday Paul McCartney is on bass and backing vocals, and you can hear it on YouTube. Remember, you can find our shows on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast. Look for our Beatle News and Information Group on Facebook and join us, please. Also, check out our That's What I Want Beatles Store page, also on Facebook, for great deals for yourself or your favorite Beatle fan. And you'll find links to my ebook about Davy Jones of the Monkeys and Candy's uh, Beatleness book. And if you like this show, please subscribe and please comment and tell us on iTunes or on YouTube what you think. We'll be looking forward to hearing from you. Till next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying, Be seeing you. that one market fab <laughs> <laughs>